In the company of my dear companions, I anticipate an enjoyable journey. Unexpectedly, a call from Brian disrupted my tranquility, as I had noticed his peculiar behavior of late, returning home late, engaging in secretive conversations with Nicole, and displaying restlessness within our abode. Was he concocting a plan all along? I had suspected a possible collaboration between Brian and Nicole, a dubious alliance. Fortunately, I had foreseen this possibility and made certain preparations. Perhaps, I shall feign surprise at this moment. Pardon? What do you mean? Please elaborate. Truth be told, I was already aware of Brian's departure for this trip today, it truly is unfathomable. If he intends to deceive me, it would be wise for him to plan more astutely. I had exercised patience in all matters until now, but presently, a burning desire for retribution engulfs me. I am resolute in my determination to devise a revenge scheme. It is high time we retaliate against these insufferable siblings. Once this day of forbearance concludes, I believe all shall become clear. I hope they are relishing their sojourn, unaware of the compatriot they unwittingly possess. My name is Pamela Smith, a 33-year-old residing in the abode I share with my spouse, Brian. Following my graduation from high school, I embarked upon a career at my present place of employment. With the guidance of my boss and the acquisition of certifications, I quickly rose through the ranks in the company. Despite my youth, I aspired to achieve high-level positions. When new employees, including Brian, joined the team, I found myself in a superior role despite being younger than him. As I trained Brian and others, I found myself forming a close bond with him, eventually falling in love. Our relationship followed a familiar trajectory, dinners out, drives around town, and eventually moving in together. As time passed, I couldn't help but notice Brian's messy habits. I interpreted it as a sign of trust, allowing him to be himself. When Brian proposed, I accepted, and we began discussing our future together. Brian envisioned me as a stay-at-home wife, managing the household while he focused on earning money. He also expressed a desire for children and homeownership. While I agreed with the general plan, I expressed concerns about finances and the order of events. Despite my reservations, I was willing to work towards our shared goals while maintaining my career. It may prove to be a challenge as I already earn more than you. Perhaps we should focus on planning the wedding and managing the house for now, and consider the idea of having children at a later time. When the time comes, we can revisit the topic of my job. I must admit, I was hesitant to suggest this as I did not want to leave my job, but I felt it was necessary to move things along before our wedding. We celebrated our engagement with both of our families, although I met Brian's sister Nicole for the first time at the wedding. She entered the bride and groom's waiting room without warning, sized me up, and made a snide remark about my appearance compared to Brian's previous partners. Nicole introduced herself as my sister-in-law and warned me that she does not hold back with family. I introduced myself as Pamela, and was taken aback by her boldness. Despite her brashness, I later found her husband to be a decent man. Due to his sister's arrival, it seemed probable that Brian had relayed to her that he had solely purchased the house, disregarding my contributions towards the down payment and mortgage payments. Yet, Brian had fervently desired to have his name solely on the title, and I reluctantly acquiesced. Since we resided together, I had believed that the proprietorship would be of little consequence. Nonetheless, the manner in which he elucidated this to his sister vexed me, though I resolved to maintain my composure and avoid causing a scene. The ceremony proceeded flawlessly, and upon exploring our new abode, Brian and I made the mutual decision to purchase the house that had captivated us both. Anticipating a surge of activity, I dedicated myself to my work on an ostensibly ordinary day off. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, and preoccupied as I was, I delegated the task of answering it to Brian. Upon his return, he engaged in jovial conversation, as it transpired that my sister-in-law, Pamela, had paid an unexpected visit. In the kitchen, I found a selection of snacks laid out. Brian, a diligent worker, was present. The conversation turned to Pamela, who seemed to possess an air of authority despite not holding a managerial position. It was then revealed that Pamela had started working immediately after leaving high school, which explained her elevated status. 
Brian, however, expressed his determination to eventually surpass her. The conversation took an unexpected turn when it was revealed that Pamela had dropped out of high school. This revelation seemed to unsettle someone in the room, as they questioned Pamela's accomplishments. In response, Pamela asserted her authority as Brian's sister-in-law, suggesting that because of her familial relationship, she had the right to make demands. The threat of eviction was even mentioned if Pamela were to refuse. Confused by the exchange, I quietly excused myself and retreated to the kitchen, pondering the absurdity of the situation. From the kitchen, I could hear Brian's voice, indicating a serious conversation had taken place earlier. My sister-in-law, Pamela, entered and asked to borrow a significant sum of money. Despite the size of the request, she insisted it was just a small amount. When questioned about the need for the money, Pamela mentioned renovation costs and her new condo. After some back and forth, Pamela agreed to draw up a promissory note for the loan, with the stipulation that she provide identification when collecting the funds. Regardless of what I may have articulated, it became evident that my words held no sway. Subsequently, I learned that Nicole had utilized the funds for extravagant purchases, and once I had extended my financial support, she incessantly requested more without hesitation. Naturally, I insisted on her signing a promissory note each time, and within the span of a month, she had borrowed a staggering sum of $12,000 from me. Just when I believed this arrangement had become untenable, I received an unexpected summons to my superior's office. In the face of a certain inconvenience, I begrudgingly acquiesced, knowing that the monetary compensation was worth the hassle. I had an intuitive sense that obtaining a legally binding promissory note from my sister-in-law was imperative, despite her grumbling. To my surprise, Nicole complied the following day with all the necessary documentation. However, it was through this situation that I discovered the extent of Brian's sister's indulgence towards him, a revelation that appeared rather preposterous. My aspiration has always been to rise to the position of head manager, and I am thrilled to be getting closer to achieving that goal. However, I was taken aback to learn that Pamela had accepted a promotion without consulting me first, as I had previously expressed my desire for her to be a stay-at-home wife. This situation has left me feeling frustrated and confused, especially when Brian's sister accused me of stealing his promotion opportunity. Ultimately, the events that transpired led to my bank card being taken without my consent. The grand total amounted to a staggering $6,000. Consumed with frustration, I suppressed my retort as more employees filed into the office, biding my time until I could address the issue. Upon returning home, I hastened to inspect the withdrawn funds from our bank account, only to be shocked by the depletion of $8,000. Confronting Brian, I demanded an explanation for his audacious actions. How could he have withdrawn such an exorbitant amount for lavish bar visits and extravagant barbecues? After all, it was my hard earned money. The following day, Brian failed to return home when I departed for work. Upon my arrival, he approached me with a smug expression, relishing in the previous day's indulgence at someone else's expense. Graciously, he presented me with the receipt, revealing an exorbitant sum of $1,200 spent at an extravagant barbecue establishment, accompanied by receipts from opulent bars. I struggled to resist, but their united opposition overpowered me, leaving me restrained and defeated. They departed with laughter, leaving my eyes brimming with tears. How foolish I was to marry such a man. Regret is a futile sentiment now, for I must urgently seek the counsel of a proficient divorce attorney this very night. Upon returning home, I discovered remnants of my past life as a single woman. My husband's dismissive attitude towards our financial situation led to a heated argument, prompting him to retreat to the bathroom. Feeling disillusioned, I made the decision to seek legal counsel regarding a potential divorce. In the following weeks, tensions escalated as my husband began exhibiting suspicious behavior, prompting me to consider hiring a private investigator. A conversation with my brother-in-law revealed that my sister-in-law had been spending time with my husband, further fueling my doubts and uncertainties about the future of my marriage. Go ahead, I instructed him, divulging all the details concerning the money I had lent my sister-in-law, as well as everything else. In response, Kevin emitted a weary sigh and confessed, I deeply regret my wife's actions. 
Truth be told, I have reached my breaking point and contemplated filing for divorce, but I lacked the fortitude to follow through. Why not utilize the evidence I have gathered, Kevin? You too deserve liberation from this predicament, I proposed. It is unjust for you to remain entangled in this situation. Together, let us administer a taste of their own medicine to these self-centered and profligate siblings. Indeed, Kevin concurred, let us collaborate on this endeavor. By the way, I interjected, I suspect Nicole and the others might be plotting a trip. Kevin mentioned that she had been urging him to take an extended vacation, and I noticed travel brochures on Pamela's vanity, which piqued my curiosity. Determined, I resolved to explore the forbidden territory of Brian's shelf, despite his repeated warnings against doing so. As anticipated, I stumbled upon an array of travel brochures and club cards. This revelation sparked an epiphany within me. Kevin, I believe they are genuinely planning a journey. I stumbled upon some brochures, I disclosed, before elaborating on the devised plan. Kevin, amused, burst into laughter and readily consented to partake in our scheme. We agreed to synchronize further details through text and concluded the call. For far too long, I have exhibited great patience. Therefore, a modicum of retribution is not an unreasonable request. I find myself devoid of any emotion. Brian, what did you mention earlier? Did you not inform me about my debit card? Pardon? However, I possess my card in my wallet. What are you insinuating? For here it is, in my possession. Wait, what on earth is this? Have you just now noticed? It appears your comprehension is somewhat delayed, am I correct? I harbored suspicions that they were plotting something, but fortunately, I had prepared myself. Perhaps I should feign surprise, exclaiming, What? What do you mean? Explain yourself. Surely, you have not noticed my astuteness. We had prearranged this excursion long ago, with Kevin serving as our contingency plan in case of unforeseen circumstances. We believed your recent arrogance warranted a lesson. Understand this, henceforth, you shall be powerless against us. I can no longer endure this intolerable situation. In a calculated manner, I furnished him with potential evidence that could prove advantageous in the divorce proceedings, while meticulously strategizing our next moves. A fortnight later, in the early hours of the morning, Brian departed from our abode. I was already aware of his intentions, having been informed by Kevin the day prior. Several hours elapsed before Brian made a phone call. He brazenly declared his intention to enjoy himself on my account, accompanied by his sister and acquaintances. I had become aware of his late-night returns and surreptitious conversations with Nicole, sensing that something was awry. In a shocking turn of events, it was revealed that a deceitful scheme orchestrated by Nicole and Brian involved the swapping of a fitness club membership card for a debit card. The betrayal left the other party feeling disappointed and questioning the motives behind the switch. With tensions running high, it became clear that relationships were strained and trust was broken. Upon our return, there shall be indelible memories, as I have prepared tokens of appreciation for both of you. Are you attempting to sway us with your offerings? I shall only accept currency, nothing more. Nevertheless, time will reveal the outcome. Let us redirect our focus. Ah, uh. Pamela, would it be possible for you to transfer funds to me? Without further ado, I ceased the conversation, for no additional words were necessary. I received a urgent message from Brian instructing me to send the money as soon as possible. Despite the cold weather in Alaska, where Brian and his group are located, I managed to successfully execute my plan. Kevin, who was supposed to assist, was not present. After a series of missed calls and messages, I eventually reached Brian and completed the transaction. It turns out that Kevin had boarded a plane and was on his way back. It became clear that there was a larger scheme at play involving my husband and Nicole. After hanging up the phone, I made the decision to call in my lawyer for a final meeting regarding the impending divorce. I knew Brian and the others would soon confront me, and as expected, upon their return, they began yelling accusations. 
Despite their anger, I remained calm and presented them with the necessary paperwork for property division. Their shock and disbelief at the reality of the situation was evident as they processed the news of the divorce. With a sense of finality, Kevin and I left them to digest the information, knowing that this was the right decision for all involved. Even the phone call made during your vacation, Brian, has consequences you are unaware of. This relationship cannot continue in this manner. Are you certain of your actions? I am requesting reimbursement for half of the down payment on our home, the remainder of the mortgage, and the funds from my personal savings that you used while I was single, Nicole. You must repay the money borrowed and withdrawn from my savings account with Brian. This accusation of borrowing without permission is unfounded. Please review the evidence thoroughly. A promissory note detailing the borrowed amount is present. Both Brian and Nicole denied any knowledge of these transactions, destroying the evidence in front of us. Their defiant attitudes were evident as they challenged us to prove their wrongdoing. In the first place, Brian, even if you proceed with that course of action, there remains residual data on the computer. Moreover, Nicole, that particular document was not the original rendition. Pray tell, what in the world are the two of you engaging in? Oops. Indubitably. Neither of you seem to consider the consequences, Nicole, and I hold you accountable as well for depleting our savings and engaging in a dalliance with that gentleman. Both of them shamelessly wept on the spot. The total sum I invoiced Brian amounted to a staggering $115,000. $5,000 were allocated for emotional distress. $100,000 were designated as the down payment for our dwelling, while $10,000 accounted for various miscellaneous expenses. Furthermore, an impending loan repayment of $2,000 is expected, as Nicole owes me a total of $31,000. $8,000 were attributed to miscellaneous expenses, and an additional $23,000 corresponded to a loan for which she signed a promissory note. Concerning the invoice I sent to Nicole from Kevin, since she deliberately caused emotional distress and incurred expenses, the tally reached an astounding $120,000. $30,000 were designated for emotional distress. In a sum of $90,000 allocated for various expenses, with no division of assets involved, akin to condominiums, I pondered whether the less astute individuals would pursue legal action. However, our legal counsel inserted a stern warning at the conclusion of the documentation, advising against litigation as it would likely result in an unfavorable outcome with no representation available. Ultimately, we reached a resolution without resorting to a courtroom battle. With my belongings in hand, I departed from the house. News of my departure had somehow spread throughout my workplace, prompting a transfer for him to a different branch. Shortly thereafter, Brian reached out to me pleading for us to meet. I never anticipated that life without him would be so desolate. Could we possibly give our relationship another chance? Despite his offer for me to work as much as I desired, I knew deep down that a reconciliation was futile. Farewell, Pamela, it is Nicole speaking. I implore you to reconsider your stance with my brother. Why don't we reside together? Perhaps there has been a misunderstanding that has clouded our interactions. I hold firm in my belief that things will improve. Nicole, I regret to inform you that it is an impossible endeavor. I bid you adieu. Despite their pleas, I disregarded them and blocked their means of communication. It appears that Kevin also received a similar appeal, but he declined and severed contact as well. Time passed. As I passed by my former home in a taxi, I noticed it was already on the market, now that the mortgage had been paid off. I had cut off all contact with the previous occupants, leaving me unsure of their current situation. In my own life, I had moved into a new condominium and received a promotion to regional director at work, a position I had long desired. I also began spending time with Kevin, a man slightly older than me with whom I shared a natural connection and enjoyable conversations. Life post-divorce was treating me well, and I was grateful for the decision to end my marriage. The details of my relationship with Kevin are a story for another time.